Let's start with trade, as that's what uh, is, is, is sort of top of our agenda today. Is this the toughest trade environment that you've ever seen and how are you protecting your business? Well, it, it's fair to say for a company like ourselves that operates directly in 86 different markets around the world, there's a bit of a new world order um, where uncertainty and volatility have become a little bit the new norm. And the key point there is to be extremely agile in terms of resource allocations, in terms of price management and so on. And, and that's what the, the world in which we operate. Um, a very warm welcome to you, Alexander. Good to see you this morning. Um, look, China's incredibly important to you. It's, uh, your sales were up 17% there. If Anna and I were to say to you, what is the biggest concern in the boardroom? Is it trade disputes? Is it that that could unseat the demand cycle for you? Well, we, we are a terroir-based business, uh, origins-based business. Scotch whiskey is made in Scotland and Irish whiskey, Jameson, is made in Ireland and so on and so forth. And cognac is from France and bourbon from the U.S. So it's fair to say that for us, uh, free trade is something which is of utmost importance. We like to bring to our consumers around the world a, pal a palette of uh, drinks that uh, come from various origins. Now, if uh, we start seeing uh, trade uh, tariffs uh, pop up, well, we'll have to um, uh, impact our pricing uh, towards our consumers. So you'd pass on the cost, essentially, if there's a tariff? Well, we'd have to, of course. Mm. Uh, leaving the trade story there for one moment and, and talking about more what Manus was mentioning there around China, um, we've seen this strength then in your numbers in China. Lots of people trying to work out just how sustainable that is, as Manus was suggesting. We've seen boom and bust in China before, haven't we, because of the, uh, the boom and then the crackdown on gift giving. Are we going to see something like that again, or is this time different? Well, during the bust times, we were extremely clear uh, with regards to the underlying fundamentals in China. There's the emerging middle class. Uh, there's no doubt it's growing. Uh, we basically uh, currently are targeting close to 300 million consumers in China, and by 2027, we'll be targeting double that number, uh, 600 million uh, consumers. Uh, every year you have an additional 6 million households that earn more than $4,000 a month. So the, the, the consumer dynamics are there in China. You can have some volatility. Um, our uh, long-term uh, vision for China is anywhere between high single-digit growth and low double-digit growth. But that doesn't mean there will be volatility, uh, so there will be ups and downs but the dynamics are there. Uh, one of the things that the market is fixated on in terms of the numbers is your promotional spend, uh, Alexander, versus profitability. Can you give us an update in terms of, will there be an expansion in promo spend? Are you gonna cap it? What, what is your thinking for 2019 in terms of promo spend? Well, we have uh, invested uh, over the last fiscal year at a faster rate than our net sales. And despite that, uh, we have uh, delivered uh, margin improvement, uh, bottom line. And these uh, investments are for the long-term growth of our business and principally driven by markets such as China because of the dynamics I just explained, or markets like India, where the legal drinking age population increases every year on average by uh, 20 million people. Uh, so this requires uh, investment and that's for the long-term growth prospects of Pernod Ricard. That being said, we have improved our margin. Will you be investing much in another area that some of your competitors are? Constellation Brands moving uh, into marijuana and trying to make money in that area. We've talked about this in the past. The drinks industry seems to be getting on with this maybe quicker than the tobacco industry. Is this a fad, Alexandra? Is this something you're con seriously considering and do you have plans around it? Well, these are ex precisely the questions we're asking ourselves. We are monitoring the situation quite closely. We're making uh, the analysis. It's still too early to say, uh, especially, here's a question, uh, is the legalization of cannabis going to have an impact on premium spirit consumption? And so far, there's no evidence to show that. Um, one of the other things that we want to know about is you've been a little bit quieter than normal in terms of doing deals uh, this year. Are you building up a bit of firepower? We're going to see you be more active in 2019. 
We have a clear uh, roadmap when it comes down to M&A, which is an active management of our portfolio, acquiring uh, you know targeted um, uh, strategic uh, products we believe have a good fit with our portfolio, while at the same time disposing of brands uh, we don't believe are, are fit uh, for our organization and strategy. Uh, then it all depends on the opportunities and on the right price, if I may say so. So we may have some uh, dynamic years in terms of M&A activity and some less dynamic years uh, just because um, you know, price expectations may not be exactly what, what we want them to be. I must ask you about Brexit, Alexandra. Your Scotch presence means that uh, that is something that's clearly in your mind. What do you want to see from governments on either sides of the, of the channel? Well, at some point, we'd like to see visibility uh, to be able to uh, adapt ourselves. And when do you to need to see situation. that by? The sooner would be the better. Um, but we, I was mentioning earlier, we're an origins-based business. And as you mentioned, Scotch is produced in Scotland and our beef eater gin here in, in London as, and our Plymouth gin in, in Plymouth. And we export to the whole world, including to the European Union. And as soon as we know uh, what is going to happen, we'll adapt ourselves. But as an international business, obviously, we're, we're for free trade. Uh, let's just square off on that, Alexander. We, we understand your free trade. You're, you're a big investor in the United Kingdom. Can I ask you, Barnier recently, yesterday, said, look, he's prepared to offer Britain an unprecedented partnership. As a French businessman, are you lobbying the French government to come up with an unprecedented partnership. Are you being vocal at governmental level on Brexit? Well, you know, politics are politics, and in, in uh, political negotiations, there, there, there are many complexities and twists. But whether it's our uh, British friends here in the industry or uh, the, the uh, European Union players and, and the French players, we're all saying we're, we're, we're up for free trade. Uh, that's as far as we can go.